change, you fucking jammy bastard. <laughs> oh, ow. Okay. Oh, you know, it's just every, I was just making sure that I'm checking the height on this to make sure my head isn't oh, cut yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is by request. No, it's Outlaw Brothers. <laughs> no. Yes, this is by request. Yeah, who requested it? Do we know the username? Um, no, because then the comment disappeared. Oh yeah, that's right. You were saying about that. So today we're watching The Outlaw Brothers from Frankie Chan. One of my favourite Hong Kong movies. I'm excited. Oh, it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen it in a few years now. I used to watch it kind of weekly when I first got it. Mm -hmm. um, on video but it is a lot of fun <clears throat> it was requested for us to do a bit of an audio visual on this mm -hmm. you've never seen it before nope. I'm going to try and remember as much as I can about it mm -hmm. and I'm going to eat my chocolate while I push play <laughs> you get that so here we go here we are I don't know brothers this play. is the Hong Kong Legends release if anybody's watching Hong Kong Legends release play Mmm. Movie Impact. Limited. Movie Impact. Behind a number of amazing Hong Kong movies. Really? Most noticeably, The Last Blood with Andy Lau and Eric Chang, which is also known as Hard Boy 2, Hard Boy 3. Oh, Jesus, okay. <laughs> it's crazy. But a fantastic film, so you must watch that with me too. Did they just change the titles Outside of the East mm. to kind of. Mostly. If something's been a success, just to kind of boost revenue. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. So this is Michael Moy in the back. Mm -hmm. He plays a cop. Um, they're basically on the hunt for these um, car thieves, which is played by Frankie Chan and the gorgeous Max Mock. And they've been going around Hong Kong stealing Porsche, okay. mostly Porsche. Frankie Chan, the director. This is Frankie funny. Chan's the director also. And the producer, along with Eric Chang, who um, you would recognise from the likes of Infernal Affairs, the My Lucky Stars trilogy. Mm, okay. So is this <coughs> Outlaw Brothers fall yeah. under the um, heroic bloodshed genre? No. No? It's oh. just an action comedy. Okay. A martial arts action comedy. Um, I can't even say it's femme fatale. Yukari Oshima, Machiko Nishiwaki are just in it. Mm -hmm. Um... One is a cop, one is a gangster. Okay. Um, which they, <laughs> they've obviously been cast in many roles, like there's the Hans and Max Muck. And this is Frankie Chan. You can always tell Frankie with his little moustache. I was going to say, is the moustache like a a signature? It is a signature. Like Tom Selleck? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's the Tom Selleck of Hong Kong. I put a review up today on my Movie Misfit Instagram mm -hmm. that you had seen. Uh, yes, Warriors Tra Tra Tragedy, sorry, yes, sorry. which was made also by Frankie Chan and starred Frankie Chan. Um, about three, two to three years after this. So this was a period... This was made in 1990. Right, okay. This was a period when Frankie was Chan really... Getting the better of his movies out. Mm -hmm. You had this, you had Burning Ambition. Um, oh yes, sir. I, there was a section. There was a section of his career where his movies were just awesome. Mm -hmm. This being one of his finest. Um, but kind of in between, or sorry, before that and after that, then he kind of just started to be a bit of a marmite. Filmmaker mm. to most people, I adore the guy. As I say, I, I'm a big fan of his, um, of his work. But he's also more famously, in terms of being on screen, he would be most noticeable as the bad guy from Prodigal Son with Hugh Bo and Sam. Right. Hung. Yeah. He was the the guy with all the rings, the fighter with all the rings. <clears throat> but he has, believe it or not, composed for almost 400 movies in Hong Kong and China. Whoa. Um, including Ashes of Time, uh, oh. a lot of Wong Gar Wai stuff, a lot of Jackie Chan stuff. Um, 
and of course a lot of his own movies as well as hundreds of other people's of course but I look I, I love Frankie Chan he's got a, he's got a wicked sense of humor um, a lot of his movies can be seen as very non PC with a lot of violence to women as in they're mm. equal if a man can get beat up the woman can get beat up yeah yeah um, a lot of age jokes gay jokes things like that you know okay. so today it wouldn't sit with many people so mm. so well but again I watched these for the period they were made, made in I don't it's funny that you say that actually just as a as an offshot of what we're kind of doing and watching you know is that um a lot of companies are now looking like the likes of Severin films and whatever are looking at the films that they distribute mm -hmm. you know in terms of violence against women um, hate speech all that kind of stuff in it you know so it's a it's a movement that is starting that you know films like this maybe and potentially other Frankie Chan films may not ever get um released released or kind of restored because wow. of maybe yeah that that conversation that's happening right Interesting. now and we we've we've seen a couple of films you should make a couple of films that have um shown quite an inordinate amount of violence not just towards women and, mm. and but in general and have a lot of kind of rather questionable lines of dialogue in it that are a bit like oh flip you wouldn't get away with that nowadays mm -hmm. so um it's quite interesting actually that that's the kind of man and director that he is and to be such a huge name in hong kong mm -hmm. and across the world with hong kong fans um for that to be the case you know it's it's a it's a bit of a shame that they can't be seen as products of their time well that's it they are you know, you know? Not that I endorse in any way, shape, or no, form no, no, any but you've kind got, of hate. But or... you've got to understand that these were made at a, t at a different time. Mm -hmm. It's like when the BBC and other channels started saying they were pulling certain movies because of actors blackface or mm -hmm. certain... Or the whole Gone with the Wind drama. I mean, it's it's a bit of a step too far. It is. It does get reach a point when it's like, what, when does it become... Yeah. You know, when, when do we stop? Sorry, this is a great action scene coming up here. This is the guy who was just on the radio in the white shirt is Fong Hakong, who you would more recognize as the bad guy from Police Story, or one of the main bad guys from Police Story. Um, long time member of Jackie Chan's stunt team. Uh, massive Kung Fu star in his own right. He was also one of the, the mandolin players in Kung Fu Hustle. Oh! Um, but he along with some of other Jackie Chan stunt team members, is behind the... This is him here. Is behind the choreography of the film. Nice. But, it, yeah, he does deliver some amazing action here. And this is a thing at this period. Frankie Chan, a lot of people don't recognise, is very close friends with Jackie Chan. Mm-hmm. Um, and has worked with them on a number of projects. Oh, jeez. Worked with them on a number of deck. projects, yeah. Um, so, of course, Jackie and his son team returned the favour with this in bringing the action up to speed yeah. and making it a bit more <laughs> harder and exciting. It, it's funny because I actually noticed that even with a lot of um, Hong Kong released films, that. Um, there's not an awful lot to offend or to, uh, within some of the films, there's not an awful lot no, to no, offend no, the, or the whatever. Most of them. It's, but they're always rated 18 because the the hand to hand combat is so impactful. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so it's not particularly, it's not the gory or well. whatever. Yes, you know, it's, it's just quite, it's so hard hitting and yeah. impactful that it's like. But is it rated Jesus. 18 here and yes, not in Hong Kong? Probably. Because they're seeing it as more of an influential thing to children. Yes. Don't try this stunt at home, that kind of thing. You yeah. Know, where you're... <laughs> it's where the BBFC need to wind their neck in, yes, don't they? Yes, exactly. And I can understand the whole, the, the, the classification <laughs> badge and whatever, but it does make these films a little bit harder to access in of the East it does. or in the West because, <laughs> Jesus, you know, because, you know, you're getting amazing choreograph, amazingly choreographed sequences, yeah. very fluid so impactful but are they worried that it's just going to be too much for you know younger audiences or influence yeah. younger audiences yeah. in a way like again, this but is... I have to say now, if I had seen this as a kid mm. I'd have been totally doing that shit in oh, my right. dad's car and I was yeah <laughs> but not to the point of 
creating uh, or not to, to damage anything or not to be bad. No, I, just this to was recreate the what adrenaline loved. rush you got from watching these Hong Kong movies mm-hmm. as a kid, as a teenager, was amazing. Yeah, and me and my brother would go out and kick the shit out of each other and try and do as many of these stunts and moves mm-hmm. as we possibly could. But I just love this. It's fantastically fun. So yes, I was saying sorry that uh, Frankie and Jackie Chan have a long time friendship, long time working relationship, and um, as well as Frankie composing some things and both of them working together on each other's movies, he also helped write the likes of Chinese Zodiac. Oh. AKA Armor of God Three. Mm-hmm. Um. Also, um, was one of the assistant directors on it, on Chinese Zodiac, oh, right, okay. as he also was around this period for Operation Condor, oh, and Drunken Master Two, okay, as well as a few other projects, and then after a bit of a slow period in Frankie's career as a director, whenever he came back with the, which I think is an amazing film, Legendary Amazons. Right. Uh, Jackie Chan produced it for him. So the Bobas had this kind of, I guess, friendship that's yeah. that stuck and working for a long time. As well. yeah. yeah. But Frankie composed. I love this scene. <laughs> it's brilliant. Oh, <laughs> Look my at goodness. this. Whoa. It's like a carry on movie. Oh. Ouch. Right into the camera. Yeah. Directed and, uh, by Frankie Chan. Yeah, Frankie would have composed a ton of classic titles from the Shaw Brothers period like back in the early 70s mm-hmm. so that's how early he was he was in the industry as a composer and then he had starred and made one movie I can't remember the I, I want to say Red Lips or something like that okay. before he starred in Prodigal Son as the antagonist as the the main bad guy of it I'm sensing a wee bit of like Gone in sixty seconds, Fast and Furious. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. With, the, with with the with the nice cars with the, the and the, the styling. And and, yeah. Yes, I, I was again. It's a product of its time. Yeah, this was a thing that they're obviously sponsored by Autolook. Yeah, uh, because every <laughs> single bloody bit. car there is an Autolook car. <laughs> well, you know, Hong Kong movies do uh, have a lot of sponsorship. You'll do they find rely that, a lot on sponsorship for especially something for back things. then? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll find at the end, you'll get a lot of. Um, Logos come up on the credit roll for watches, especially. Oh, right, okay. Clothing. Um, cars, obviously. Um, mm. Jackie, with his massive Mitsubishi deal, obviously, at this period of time. Mm. Um, so, yes, you will see a lot of that. Is that, I mean, was that is that a common thing in, in um, Hong Kong cinema to, in order for them to get a lot of funding for their films, they would have gone to um, retailers more, to say, more we'll put juice. Such. It seemed to be, again, because you use that tactic. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. More so because I've learned from, from yes. this. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so rather than going to any screen and asking for funding for your film, you go to local businesses, go to a local and, business say, and just say, can you give £100 for us and we'll. Or let us use your location and yeah. your, your um, premises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's basically how we get away with a lot. Mm-hmm. We get, you know, we, we make friends with the right people, yeah. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but yeah, so obviously Frankie and Max, again, I absolutely yeah, love Max Mock. Yeah, they work for this other guy. who is wheelchair by man. wheelchair by man, who is the overall crime lord. Although seems like a very decent enough guy. But... They're it's very diverse to have a disabled yeah. mafia boss, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very progressive Hong Kong. Well very, done. But you will see this a lot with Hong Kong movies. And again, more so from these periods and before that everyone's kind of seen as an equal. Yeah. The cars are fucking gorge, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, God, yeah. This is a film I would like to see Idiot clean up. I can just imagine that scene alone would be mm. stunning looking in high def, you know, really cleaned up, gorgeously yeah. presented. And I think there's a lot to say for it whenever you get into it and search, search, search going, you know, even the car park fight was fun. Yeah. It actually gets better and better and better. But um, yeah, I'd love to see this. There's a few Frankie Chan movies I would really like to see delivered um, to a high standard. I think he's very forgotten about and underrated I and love that he's people. covered in lipstick yeah. here it's like <laughs> how much lipstick is she wearing 
So Max Mock um, is a very popular actor. He recently, I'm not too sure of the projects of the last five years, but the last thing I would have had him in was Seven Assassins, which was kind of this underrated epic of getting all the old stars of Hong Kong cinema back into this oh. almighty uh, kung fu kind of war drama. It was right. a fantastic film. I really loved it. Um, but he was also in Samuel Hung's Pedicab Driver. Had an amazing role in it. Uh, had his a role as like this kind of scarred assassin in The Assassin uh, from similar period around 93, 94 as well. But yeah, very popular actor in TV and, and movies. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it's one of the best lines. A hundred Hong Kong dollars for the toilet you get your ass washed in there. That's an excellent line. A hundred Hong Kong dollars is maybe ten pounds. Oh, okay. So, well, I don't know back then what it would be, but... Yeah. <laughs> no, more so. But yes, of course, this is the, the nightlife um, of Hong Kong, like the, the club, night the club life. Who's that, Shang Kwok? No. Where's uh, Bond? He's called Bond in this? Bond. Oh. His name is Bond. Look at that lamp. I know, what the hell? It's like, a, like a big lotus flower. It is. It's a big plant. Very nice. James. <laughs> oh my god, this is hysterical. I haven't had. Uh, uh. Oh dear. So he's James and the other one's Yeah, it's Bond, Bond yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> James and Bond together. Yeah. At last. <laughs> Finally both in the same <laughs> film. For <laughs> once. <laughs> but yeah, Frankie has made some very interesting career choices in terms of movie making. Um, from like uh, the mid 80s he's got on VCD I have it there called Unforgettable Fantasy which is just I can't even explain it it's wild bonkers it's film. something else um, and then he made The Good, The Bad and The Beauty which was a pretty sweet regular Hong Kong action comedy mm -hmm. but again a lot of abuse on um, I think Sally Ye was in it uh, but again <laughs> It's easy to say. Sammo Hung has been renowned for violence on women in his movies, on, on female characters. Mm -hmm. And so is Frankie Chan. But Frankie seems to take more of a rap for it. Right. Um, but, yeah, he also starred, with apart from Prodigal Son, he starred after that in Carry On Pickpocket with Sammo Hung, which was a fun movie about him and Sammo being pickpockets and getting done over themselves and getting involved with gangsters. Very, very funny. Some great fight scenes. Um, but mostly a comedy. Mm. Uh, oh, is it a is it a cultural thing over there? The kind of the the kind of uh, senseless violence is supposed towards towards women and people. Is I it a cultural thing? I or? think it's more of a case. <laughs> or is it really? I hate to say it, a case for uh, just entertainment. I think it's highlighted more so in the movies. I don't think today. Again, I haven't spent enough time there to really mm. see the real the real side of it. Yeah. But I'd imagine there is still more on in this uh, the nightlife. Oh dear, he's just <laughs> literally told her that he has AIDS. <laughs> oh my god, no! It's another AIDS joke, right? Yeah. So uh, the Warriors tragedy, which is a traditional mm. Wu Shao movie set hundreds of years ago, right at the end of it. He shouts out an AIDS joke and somebody turns on his horse. T-Lung turns on his horse and says, why would you use such a modern line in this film? It's a bizarre what an fourth awful. wall kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Breaking the fourth wall kind of thing, you know? Oh, oh, oh my God. Did she just fucking stab him in the face? In the ass. And oh. the, well, I've seen that happen before. Well, but... more than once. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I love that scene. <laughs> When we were in Hong Kong, I <gasps> nice. couldn't wait to cross these, these this, flyovers. I was just going to say, have you been here? There was ones I was on that I recognised from movies. Oh, oh, beautiful. Yeah, there was ones I was on. <laughs> so, right, so see, oh. so we, we had a discussion on our podcast about women in action <laughs> and kind of women kind of doing it. And see what I mean? She's just kind of 
she's just very much a girl who can take yeah. care of herself. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Yeah. Which is the majority of the time. That that's what their mm-hmm. characters can do. They've yeah. no... <laughs> there's no real set motive. Yeah. Or they're not specially trained. No, Or anything yeah. like that. <laughs> they can just, can just do it. Do it yeah. Which is why you'll find... I suppose in the majority of the action comedies, the violence on the women is just seen as another person because mm. they can dish it out, they can take it. Yeah. In that respect. So she can stab someone up the arse with a knife. Yeah. She, she can pretty she can much get, get her whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. She can get abused. Another very, I can't remember, I can never remember his name. Then there's a fine line Chang, between is Chang, it Chang, violence Chang. towards women or is it just as you say, it's just a case of they're they're receiving violence because they have been violent. Yeah, you know, yeah, so it, she's I mean. in this film as... she's beaten up, you know, she's literally stabbed someone in yeah, the bum bum. Yeah. yeah. And bum bum. in the bum bum. <laughs> I'm trying to be PC here, people. Um in the bum bum and she's kind of then getting beaten up. You know, it's not a case of it's because she's a woman. Yeah, it's because no, of how she, it's how she yeah, t- yeah. yeah. I mean Got really it. if somebody stabbed you in the ass with a knife. I wouldn't care was, if it was and not if it was woman. a woman would they plied her one in the face. Sorry to any feminists out there, but, but if this, you're gonna stab me in the arse with a knife. Yeah. You're going to punch You couldn't see if it was a Moonly um, or any female action led cop thriller. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't see the bad guys who were cornered by her with a gun mm-hmm. say, oh, it's okay. Well, you know, yeah, we're gonna not take gonna, us because yeah. you're a woman. We're not, but that would be slightly more insulting. Yeah, they're just coming at her. Yeah, she's yeah, just, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yes, it is. And these are gangsters. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, you'll find. It will be the gangsters that are dealing the beatings. The d- yes, dishing out the violence. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm. Place. Not sorry. No, no. The, 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 <laughs> the, the, the visual scene that of just the hotel. came up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. The hotel we stayed in in Hong Kong, it was mm-hmm. right next to the uh, Jim Sha Choi shopping centre where Jackie Chan done his yes, fantastic like, stunt. Yeah. And also, but what we didn't re- rec- realise was to the to the right that was behind us but to the right was the alleyway um, used in the uh, Heart of the Dragon the first mission where they did some of the car stunts and that so I'm always looking out for these little spots that we yeah yeah because yeah. we, we obviously walked to the feet of ourselves trying to well, i was gonna say i mean it's 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 a big area you know <laughs> yeah it's fast and it's always fun to watch a film filmed in hong kong because what's so interesting is it never actually really looks the same no, you know when they film yeah. in new york you, they've always it's distinctly the very much oh but, you can tell but whereas again, in hong kong it always looks like so different yeah I, it does but that's a western thing that i find hollywood Hollywood would find or think that the majority of their audience is stupid, so they need to show the Empire State Building. They yes. need to show the Eiffel Tower to show they're in Paris. They need or the to Golden Gate Bridge for San Francisco. Yes. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They need to. to they need or the to Hollywood sign. Them, yeah, for LA. they need yeah, to yeah, fill yeah. them in locations that are obvious. Yeah. You know, whereas with this, you're kind the of. The James like, Bond brothers are yeah. in real. Oh, God, this is epic. I can't believe it. Oh, they, these guys, you know, from the way they're dressed, yeah. they're going to get into a fight scene. Uh, <laughs> All the way with Nobody's them. ever in white overalls and it ends well. No. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> an iced Coke? Who fucking well, asked for an iced Coke? Well, that's that's one of their that sponsors. That sounds pretentious as fuck. That's one no, of their sponsors. No, yeah, no, I know. Like, <laughs> like like an can, I, can I have an iced Coke, please? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, he's so gorgeous. Oh, he's beautiful. Small. <gasps> Do you know much about the production history of this film at all? Or um, no, not a no, not enough. No. Um, it's something I find. I hate putting you on the spot lot. like that. No, but no, it's but I, it's something I find a lot with most Hong Kong movies. Is there's not, there's never enough story behind them, or mm. I think they were dishing them out so quick mm-hmm. at this period, especially mm. that. It was just a case of make them and get them out there. And yeah. get them done. I don't. I would imagine that. Probably 70, 80% of them would never have a 
and making of. I was just going to say, you, you know, know? It's, it's become such a common thing now for, I mean, probably in the 70s when Ever Jaws and the, and the Likes was released, you wouldn't have known an awful lot about the production of mm. it. But as the years go by, DVD increases, Learn, Blu-ray, yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, put yeah. on making of documentaries, they release books on the making yes, of. Yeah. It's not something I see of for Hong Kong no, films. Not you know, we get it, we get not enough. Audio commentaries from the likes of Mike Leader and yeah, 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 Arnie yeah. Benneman, you know, who give out really great information yes. and, you know, they talk about their favourite scenes and whatever, but oh, there she is. it's always nice to be able to say, ah, oh my God, I love her so much. She is. Um, um, it's always, it would be really lovely to have seen, like, behind the scenes on a lot yeah, of these yeah, films yeah. to That's see, what like, I mean. what There's... they did, what they got away with, oh, how they got away well, with that, you know. That's another story altogether. That's probably why they don't do yeah. behind the scenes. <laughs> If you can't prove it, we did say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They'll shoot themselves in the foot then. Maybe. Yeah. Now this is a Yukari arriving now. Look how small she She's is. She's teeny weeny actually compared to the rest of them. And yeah. Oh no, I was going to say something. This is actually the, I know, but this is the first time I've kind of caught her height. Mm. I'm not too sure how tall Michael is, but I'm sure he's probably maybe about my height. Probably around that. But Were you 5'10"? Yeah. Yeah. She would be... Quite, she's probably about the height of her daughter. Uh, Yukari Ashima, actually, um, I don't know if I've ever talked to you about this before. Is she, uh, she's Japanese. Japanese. But um, yeah. does she speak um, Mandarin? Uh, Cantonese. Cantonese? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she speaks Cantonese, but yeah. not Mandarin? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. I never, I don't I, think I've I, ever asked that before. I but... think, again, I hadn't confirmed it, but I think she may have a, a parent from mm -hmm. Hong Kong or from China. Okay. I think one of her parents might be. Um, but yeah, she's been, I mean, her first kind of role in Hong Kong would have been Sammo Hung's Shanghai Express, Millionaire's Express. Oh yeah, Millionaire's As Express. a samurai yeah. um, warrior who, she was beautiful in that. She's absolutely amazing. Yeah, I love, I do enjoy that film. Oh, it's a good film. I just got it on Blu-ray from Nova. No way! Yes. Really? Very good. Yes. <laughs> Get that face. It's not how I look when I smoke. <laughs> This is an epic fight. Oh, okay. Oh. Don't speak a word. What's the best colour for a Ferrari? <laughs> she just wanders on it. At this it? stage. <laughs> yeah, she, 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 she just kind of like walks in like, hey, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Look at him. I love watching the background, people. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Ooh, nice. Oh, she is such She a is such kick. a great... She is, isn't she? she her kicks are fantastic. She's yes. a phenomenal mover. Look at that. She And I've, we, uh, I've questioned you about this, and we've talked about this before, about the top female action stars of mm -hmm. Hong Kong cinema. And for me, it is Moon Lee and Yukari Oshima share the spotlight. Yeah. But I often do feel that Yukari just dips the toe forward a little bit more so... Really, the okay. moon because she is she is a um, so so far no, she is a genuine martial artist. Oh shit! So you carry as a martial artist. A, a tra whereas Moon was a dancer trained to fight. Yeah. Um, you carry, I believe. Oh, ah, geez. Lord God! Yeah. <laughs> so oh, that's oh, a, that was a kind of nice like da, 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 yeah, da, da, yeah, the way they all came off individually there. But again, this is action brought in by. Fun Hack On and Jackie Chan's stunt team members, mm -hmm. and there's power to it. Yeah, know? massive power. Yeah, super huge. I can understand why Mike called his magazine Impact. You know, yeah, it, was. <laughs> it, it has a lot of impact. Another very oh. common thing, actually, that you see in these films is um, bruising, bleeding, yes. marks, which is not a common thing in it's Western not, action films. It's quite it's, comical at times, especially with Samuel Hung. Samuel Hung likes to bruise fast. And a big black bruise, you mm. know, and you'll say, I love this. She's trying, oh, to, she's trying to put it up there, trying to put it down. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I mean, she's a badass, isn't she? she? Is Carrie, she's fantastic. Um, absolutely amazing. Yeah. Her moves are just incredible, and she, it's uh, that's fascinating to know actually because I didn't know that that she was she, she's actually a trained martial artist. Yeah, she she would have went to um, I think it was Sunny Shiba's or Yasuaki Karate, one or the other. She went to their their um, film and stunt school as well. So mm -hmm. then she would have trained with them, and then she went on to work in. Japan on the television show, much like Power Rangers kind of thing. Oh, right. Okay. So she was in like a Power Rangers style yeah, television Yeah, before series. she came to Hong Kong, she was already 
doing martial mm-hmm. arts kind of shows. You Can know? I actually just out of curiosity before we get back to Outlaw Brothers, um, see the actors that star in Super Sentai and things like that there mm. in Japan. Are they actually trained martial artists? I or would do they imagine get doubled in the sets. Yeah, they they do get doubled quite a bit, but I'd imagine they would have to have basic training of mm. karate. Yeah, probably yeah. more so because it's Japanese based. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, I think when it hit America, um, and the Power Rangers came about, mm-hmm. they became more martial arts based mm-hmm. actors. Like you'll find a lot of them would have martial arts training. Yeah, well, I know Amy Jo Johnson who played like the Pink Power Rangers. Yes. She was a gymnast. And, yes. Um, Jason David Frank is that what you call him? Who played the Green yeah, Power Ranger? He was a martial Johnny, artist. Johnny wasn't Bosch. He? Yeah. He was, oh, was he red? I think. Yeah. Probably. So yeah, and they there was they a few... were they were trained mm. martial art young martial artists, weren't they? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. Because people want to see that. I mean, yeah, that's something for me. It, again, it's a, it's a turn off as we spoke in our podcast of Hollywood where they they try to get actors to, to look like martial artists because yes. it sometimes just really well not it often doesn't work yeah oh here she is infiltrating the the bond brothers <laughs> the james bond the brothers the james bond brothers and obviously frankie's going to get in there first like frankie and Yukari, i do believe were dating around this time <sighs> never dip your pen in company hey? yeah <laughs> i'm nearly sure they had a relationship um and it was interesting also because he, it didn't, obviously it didn't last, but... Oh, I like that line, sorry, any tips, I don't yeah. have <laughs> He did bring her back for Legendary Amazons in 2012. Um, now, she didn't get a massive role, unfortunately, uh-huh. but it was kind of her step out of retirement before going back uh-huh. into retirement. It was nice to see. Um, I just wish she'd stuck around a wee bit. Mm-hmm. a bit more you know what, what i love actually watching this is the the, the the kind of grungy realism to hong kong films mm. you know they're they lack a sleekness that we've become accustomed to in a lot of um western films or art house films yeah. you know that even asian art house films the likes yeah, of Wong Kar Wai yeah. movies yes which have a distinctly polished feel mm. they seem Whereas there's a, most of the films that we've watched have this real grungy kind of low budget yeah, grittiness yeah. to them they, that make they them are more low movies. yeah yeah but they they make it more believable like yes. what I'm watching yeah, that yeah, yeah, you yeah. know I mean I know I, I mean watching them move I'm like well I could not move like that doesn't mean I couldn't yeah. get trained to <laughs> but I can't yeah and it's but they they just they they have this grittiness about them that makes them seem more authentic mm-hmm. no you're in right. the it genre. is it is. Um, you probably find a difference with the the Golden Harvest stuff, Jackie stuff, things like mm. that. They're a wee bit higher budget, but oh yes, they are. The yeah, majority yeah, of yeah, them, yeah. the majority of them would be considered, especially by Hollywood standards, even of this period, a, a very low budget movie. Mm-hmm. But that's not to say they don't do the job. You know, they are no, still absolutely, but it's really it's, well made. It's the it's the realism behind yes. it. You know, yeah, the fact yeah. that you know. The angles aren't too abstract. The mm. dialogue is not kind of outrageous <laughs> or anything like that. There, it's it seems like quite natural conversational yes. stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. And yeah. while it's <laughs> it, while it's funny, we know that natural conversation can be really quite funny. Mm. Um, and we talk to ourselves in the car, just like of that course. guy's just saying, yeah, you know, yeah, if you're yeah. especially you're watching, you're a fucking bastard. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but you know, it, it it seems to be that Hong Kong films, even as you know in the action genre tend to just allow the the camera to take in the actors and move quite freely with what's going on Mm -hmm. rather than trying to become part yes of what's going on until the action kicks in even whenever the action kicks in the camera is kind of moving in a sense that it's it's moving with what's going on but not becoming part of it and that's a very yeah it moves with yeah whereas we find with uh, especially with marvel and things like that the camera is in yes and is part of the action which makes it exciting but it's intrusive yeah. yeah We're not getting to see the full force of the fights like yeah. we would be here in these low budget no. um, action films, which I appreciate. I like that. I've said that often. Mm. That I, I appreciate the wide angles, There's, the wide yes. shots that where you can see what's really going on, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you you feel the impact of and the, the fights. I don't forget as well. These were at times when cameras were massive. They had film reels on them. Yeah, you know, yeah, they, of course, yeah. Of and, course. <laughs> but at the same time, 
there's I've seen seventies kung fu movies where the camera is handheld and in with the fight, mm. and it's impressive to know that they're slugging that big thing around, mm -hmm. but making it work not yeah. in an intrusive sense, but yes. they're moving, yeah, and and it's handheld. You know it's handheld. It's not on a on a tripod. Why does he have clothes of garlic hanging from his thing? <laughs> from his that's a good question isn't it yeah that is, that is, that is the question that's what's going to haunt why me this whole film why has he got cloves and garlic, garlic? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, oh, so, so I haven't even asked what's the basic plot of the film um, Halfway basically <laughs> they, the police are wanting to stop these car thieves Okay. and in between it all the, she carry, he carries one of the he carries police, one of the police. Yeah. she's now undercover here trying to infiltrate but they along the way they get involved with some gangsters. Okay. So we'll, we'll have to get to that part yet, but okay. yeah, I mean it's a simple plot, it's a basic mm. setup, but it's all about the action and the comedy. Mm -hmm. So it is. But it's yeah, all, yes, it's all in the um, kind of delivery of the action. Yeah, but you as you were saying earlier, how the camera is just left there for them. Mm -hmm. That's all then down to the performers. That's down to the actors' Absolutely. actions. Yeah. And they, yeah. They obviously deliver it because you think about it at this period of time they've been doing so much mm -hmm. you know it's like second nature just to, yeah. once the camera comes on they're just there yeah. act do it you know that's that's just them it seems like too many films try too hard to become artsy yes. to become um like you're an invader in someone's mm. space mm -hmm. and that can make for quite an uncomfortable viewing experience mm. this to me is more of a film yeah you yeah, know because yeah. i'm getting to appreciate everything that's going on within the frame yeah yeah so yeah. while there may be films that you know in the, the in the west that are filmed and you get this beautiful image with this here you're getting wide shots pretty much a lot of the time very few yeah. close-ups mm -hmm. a lot of wide shots where you're taking in a lot of the environment a lot of uh, the oh. set you know where they are what they're doing you know <laughs> probably because it was a low budget film and they wanted to show off the, the locations that they were can. filming well that's what stuff. i do if i you know mm -hmm. I, if i get a great location i want to i want to use utilize yeah, it in there. yeah <laughs> <laughs> He's desperate. He's jealous because he knows Frankie's all, uh, mm. kind of fallen for her. Look at that bath. That I was just about to say. That That's is sometimes as well. Impressive, yeah. <laughs> so they're thinking these lines. Yeah. <laughs> you carry his comic, and I've talked about this before. You carry Emily Lee's both her comic timing is fantastic. Yes. They do a lot of good comedies, um, and they're brilliant at it. So they are. <laughs> so Michael Moy, I don't know what you would have seen him in. Probably Twinkle Twinkle Lucky Stars. I haven't seen that. You haven't seen it. Again, phenomenal film. But he he was in it. He replaced Charlie Chin, who was one of the original Lucky Stars who then step back and then he, he would have come in not as an actor mm -hmm. but just as a character replaced him oh, um, right, okay. just to fill an empty seat as such um, and then he was also in City Cops with Cynthia Rothrock one of her most underrated Hong Kong movies I love it called also released in the UK as Beyond the Law but he's a very ah, good, very oh, good actor yeah, yeah yeah very good actor um, although he does a lot of comedy he does quite a bit of serious um stuff as well like police dramas and thrillers but um yeah he's still going he's still going strong today again frankie's more focused on i think on the composing i think frankie's really really starting to ca just relax now calm down in mm. terms of the industry um tequila of course she's called tequila yeah. oh my god amazing Ow! <laughs> <laughs> who else was called tequila in hong kong cinema Around this period of time? Yeah. Till it's killer? No. Hey. Try and fat. Hard boiled. Oh, why are you not flip me? Totally forgot about that. Would have been a couple of years later, maybe? Yeah. What, what year this, was Hard Boiled 92? This is Ken Boyle. I think this is Ken Boyle. Ken was the In Armour of God. Right. The, you know, the Jackie Chan, obviously, the Jackie Chan movie. Mm -hmm. he, the, the monks, he was the head monk. <laughs> so he was oh really yeah so he's obviously another westerner 
think it's Ken Boyle. Another Westerner living in Hong Kong. Oh, this wasn't even their house? No. That's not even his house? Oh my god, shit. <laughs> <laughs> what a great house. It's a great house. I'm telling you. <laughs> I love his braces, no? I know, yeah, it's, it's oh. kind of cute, isn't it? Here we go. Dun, dun. <laughs> nice. The action's kind of coming thick and fast. You know, oh, they're I, kind yeah, of doing yeah. like little bits in between to kind of progress the story, but they're this is kind of oh, yeah, full deep, of fights. Deep. Wow! Yeah. Beautiful. Again, some faces there. If someone came at me with them. a machete, I tell you something. They all <laughs> have fucking massive machetes. I would not be able to fight that. <laughs> 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 There's just an yeah. evil. She's like, why'd you touch my breast? And then she yeah. grabs onto his chest and he's like, yeah, my breasts. Yeah, stop it. But he gets the slap, or she gets the slap first. Oh, TST is one of Jackie's Do you know, I'm, I'm not a fan, I must say, of slow-mo. Now, I, I do like yes. that the slow-mo kind of, I, I understand the reasoning behind the use of slow-mo is to kind of emphasize a pretty yeah. powerful moment or to kind of elongate yeah, yeah, yeah. a scene. Yeah, um, understandably, yeah. But I'm not a fan of it. I'd much rather have this fast-paced kind of yes. cha 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 and Especially than... when it cuts in there. I never understood that. That wee clip of her going into slow-mo, you mm. know. Wasn't a specific... Very common thing in superhero films. You mm. know, to have the, 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 the hero coming in in slow motion and that kind and of iconic pose up. and then the land and fast. Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, and I'm not a massive <laughs> fan of it, I have to say. I, plus, I think it's a lazy way of editing your film. It's, yeah. it takes up. 30 seconds like of film this. that didn't need to yeah that didn't need to be there yeah it's like the show to me that takes away a lot that, that, that slow-mo takes away a lot of the impact yeah. of what she's really doing here yeah. and we know she's powerful and don't that's what take I mean. away it wasn't from that a specific move I'd understand if it was an incredibly intricate move yes but it wasn't really no. <laughs> I didn't know to do it like that <laughs> wouldn't that be fun yeah oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, that would be a fun day, actually, I must say. <laughs> I love the fact that they were just standing at the top of the stairs. Yeah, the whole time. Wondering what was going on. <laughs> My girl. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Imagine all of them can swim. for things. It's one of the first things I learned how to do. Yeah. <laughs> I could swim before I could walk. This is another thing I love about Hong Kong movies is the openness and roughness of, of the police station. Yes. You know, a, a British or American police station would not be like this. No, no, no. <laughs> Whereas Definitely not. In Hong Kong, they're so like on top of each other, you know? Yeah, they're on top of each other. It's rooms. It's It seems, yeah. Yeah, you know, and then I think more so the Americans that would have very much a divided office. Area. Yes. Big glass. Very walls, clean setup. Yeah, yeah, big yeah. stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe they just they just <laughs> film the outside of the police shots, obviously, the police stations, and then find a room somewhere to yeah. fill it with as many people and things as they can. But it would have to be realistic enough for for people in Hong Kong to be like, well, oh, that's clearly yeah, not yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a police station. You I'm know, sure like, the filmmakers and a number of them have probably been in one I would at some stage. So, yeah. <laughs> so yes, this is still them trying to get the information on the st on the stolen cars and the Porsches mm -hmm. from it. And because he lost the red Porsche earlier, which belonged to his boss, it was used as a trap. And they remember at the start they yeah. snuck up, took yeah. the car and drove away. Yeah. That was his boss's. <gasps> so that's why he wants oh, it no. back more so. <laughs> well, this is what I mean. You just don't do things like this with your work people, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You don't borrow the boss's car, you don't dip your pen on company ink, just mm -hmm. keep it all professional. <laughs> Sergeant. What? I think they spelt it wrong. Sergeant. Oh yeah, the dead, the dead, yes, Sergeant, yeah. 
I yeah, again, this is something I would really love to see cleaned up. You know, there's a grittiness to that DVD there is, quality. Yeah. I love that oh, video. Yeah, yeah. It's great. It's almost like knowing that your video tape is not going to get chewed. Yes. But you're still getting the video quality. Absolutely. <laughs> but yes, I think... It's a bit better than a video, video oh, quality. Oh, yeah. yeah. DHS well, quality, I did. I mean, I, I opened a video, believe it or not, months ago and watched it. took it out of the cellophane. Oh, and my watched God. it for the first wow. time. And the I'd quality. I'd have been myself in it. And yeah, the well, I know, right? But the quality was like this. It was gorgeous. Wow. And that was on its very first watch. So maybe just shows just... how tapes wear down mm. and the picture wears down on the um, video cassettes. Oh, I have wore, wore many out, many of them, especially like even this on video. It was just always the dread of rewinding and mm. not knowing yeah. if your tape was going to come out. End, Ooh, yeah. Christ! There's Vincent Lynn and all these guys, Jonathan Isgar and Jeff Falcon. These guys, He's George. J- Jeff, yeah. um, he is from America. He starred, he made his own movie. Thing. Yeah, wow. this is Machiko Nishiwaki. Woo! He Woo! made his own movie called Six String Samurai. Have you ever heard of it? No. Very worth a, worth a watch. It's kind of like a post apocalyptic Elvis meets Hong Kong style kung fu. Kind of Mad Maxi mm. film. Very, very fun. Um, it is out there. I have seen it highlighted on eBay a few times. So it is kicking around. But um, he made a, a big name for himself in Hong Kong. A fantastic American wushu martial artist. Uh, got to fight Cynthia Rothrock and Prince of the Sun. Things like that. Okay. But um, the other guys that were fighting on the boat before he put the gun to the head. Around this same time were... A lot of the same bad guys from Operation Condor. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. And they've got two. So they were the kind of go-to guys of uh, Guaylos in Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. As such, um, who would often be suited and booted to be the bad guys of the show. I really love Machiko in this film because she's actually quite nasty. Mm. You know, she's got a real kind of like evil streak about her. Uh, something else I actually wanted to ask. Sorry, <laughs> just. D- 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 it's Bruce Fontaine. Is do Asian people like smoke? A lot of them? Yeah, yeah. oh god. So, I was going to say, is that I didn't want to say it directly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, it, it all Asian smoke. No, but all it all seems to be like, of, yes. like it's a big thing. Especially in with the older Hong generation. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, with the older generation. Do you know, I'd like to know what they use for cocaine. Mm. I know that in Wolf of Wall Street they use like ground down sugar and um, I still would not want to put that up my nose no and that, well what do you call him what do you call the not Leonard DiCaprio but the other fella that's in it oh, Jonah see. Hill yes Jonah Hill he said like his like his nose he was sneezing and coughing because of it, he was having to constantly redo scenes where they're like no. snorting ground sugar oh and I've once snorted for it, now not for enjoyment but for um a play that I was doing I was like supposed to be taking drugs in it as a teenager right. a teenage druggie and they actually um took out the powder of paracetamol and let me tell you that feeling in the back of your throat was no. not was not enjoyable at all there's nothing <laughs> up this nose that I don't want nah well, well. <laughs> so that's you know Yes. With the grittiness of this, what did they use in Hong Interesting. Kong? Interesting. Yeah, yeah, Or did yeah. they just go out and get a bag of cocaine? Oh, I don't know. No, I don't think so. Last night. I don't think so. Last night. <laughs> <laughs> well, Last night. But I think... I swear to God, hotel, Mike. <laughs> she's... Machiko... I don't know. I don't know her personally. I wouldn't imagine... Mm. Nice. That she mm. would have took something legitimately real. Yeah. Um, What's the just, point? But just... Machiko, you know, and it was, it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> so it is. Ah. Uh, yeah, Machiko, um, more internationally known as the Lady Gambler from God of Gamblers. <gasps> yes, and okay. also the muscle, the muscle bound woman, because she is a, 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 a weightlifter. Oh. Um, a, 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 I don't know, Olympia, I don't think Olympic, I think, just, but an athlete weightlifter. Mm. Um, this is a big chase sequence here. Yes. Mm-hmm. And my lucky star, she was the Lady Gambler in it, okay. who then became one of the um, villains that fought Sybil Who and mm. Samohan. 
Well, Samu Hung took her to Emma One Punch. But yes. <laughs> she is very popular. And again, someone who I, I find is missed from the Hong Kong scene. Mm. She always made a fantastic villainess. You know, yeah. she was really threatening. Yeah. A uh, fantastic mover. Very tough. Does she have a... <laughs> shooting a in film. this film... To um, does she have a chance to fight in here? Oh yes. Oh good. Oh yes. Very much so. See, it's odd for that first kind of car tilt that they would slow it down, mm. and then for the other ones they just kind of have it naturally. I prefer to see it happening in real time. Yeah, yeah, slow yeah. Down yeah. Like that. There's itch from steps. Bet you that was the last thing on his mind. But um. Yes. So you got the guys. There's only a heartbeat away. Yeah. You. I know. Very good. I know. So there's. Oh, sorry. That's who I wanted to point out earlier. It was sorry. Bruce Fontaine. Yes, him in the back. No, that's okay. Mark Houghton from England. Okay. Mark again, a very very popular um, Western actor in Hong Kong. Um, fantastic documentary on him. I think on Amazon Prime at the moment called "I Am White Tiger." Okay. A moderate, like it's only a few years old, if even. Oh, <gasps> good. Sh- Christ yeah. above my goodness they look like real people they certainly were um, yes yeah, so Mark uh, very very po- one of the most popular and he was actually taken under the wing of Larga Lung who was one of the almighty Shaw Brothers directors mm. who worked with Jackie on Drunken Master 2 and 30, made 36 Chamber and all mm, that kind of thing yeah. and he was taught the Hungar style and um. But he, you'll see him popping up in pretty much the majority of mm-hmm. Hong Kong action movies from around this time. But you also had Bruce Fontaine, sorry, mm-hmm. and yes. I'll point Bruce Fontaine out later. Okay. He is a Canadian martial artist who went to Hong Kong to work. But you remember at our film festival, we played Strega. Yeah. Uh, um, Boino, who directed Strega, was from Canada. We met him in Tokyo mm-hmm. to give him his awards. Mm-hmm. He was a student of Bruce Fontaine back in Canada. Wow. So it was nice to knit all these links together. Mm-hmm. Um, and for Bruce, who has worked on many, even I think he was in, I think he was in Knockoff. He um, was able to work, go from working with the likes of Jackie Chan on Operation Condor, Frankie Chan here and so on and so on. Mm-hmm. Teach Bueno and then Bueno to bring that skill that he'd learned into Strega. So yeah. it, was, it was quite a nice a sweet bit of trivia but um, yeah yeah so yes these guys are going to continue their, their, even though she knows his background and he knows that she's a cop they're still going to continue their relationship okay. here okay was it a, a common thing in um, eastern cinema to bring in um, western martial artists to make them more internationally accessible or was it just because in a sense, British martial artists didn't have that outlet <laughs> sorry here's oh. <laughs> Sheila Chan getting beat up again. Um, in every movie she gets beat up. Oh, God. it's like a running joke, in a sense. <laughs> in a sense. <laughs> it's a, yeah. Um, but yeah, it. Do you know what? They've always got. I mean, I suppose because Hong Kong was very multicultural, there was always mm-hmm. a lot of Westerners about anyway. Yeah. Um, and there's uh, from the historical epics of like Once Upon a Time in China and so on. Mm-hmm. There's always been Westerners needed for particular roles. Mm-hmm. So yes, they've always kind Is of been there. Is that because of the British occupation? Yeah, and yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but I think more so, it's easier to make fun of them. Yeah. You know, it's as, as we would use token, as I say. From the West. Oh, yeah. Token, I know what you mean. <laughs> token black guys, token Asian guys, yeah. all that kind of thing. They would do the same with Westerners, I guess, okay. to a point. Yeah. Cynthia was really one of the first Westerners who came in, took a lead good guy role, mm-hmm. and became known as that person. Mm-hmm. Whereas the majority of them, if not all of them. So a lot of it was cultural, a lot of it was the outlet wasn't available in the West for a lot of these martial art, white martial artists yeah, yeah, yeah. to act in a if movie. I, and if then... I had have had the ability when I left high school, turned 18, to get out there and do the same thing, I would have, mm-hmm. I would have, should have. You should have, hindsight's a wonderful thing though, isn't it really? But, yeah. You know. Oh, but that's what You're they doing... that's what they all done. They yeah. all wanted to be in it, they all went out there. Yeah. And it did so and then as a as a kind of 
countenance and as a ripple effect it made it more internationally accessible yeah, yeah, yeah. for people because totally. yeah. they could identify with people that were within those of roles. Course, because that's you know, you still have those people here that won't watch a Chinese movie, but mm. if they see a white face in it, yeah, they're, exactly. They're, they're gonna yeah. watch it. Isn't it so funny? Actually I read an article recently that um how marginalized Asians and Muslims are in, in film you know, as, you know, the, the, the villain or, you know, the comic character. Mm. But yeah, in Eastern mm. films, uh, white men are marginalized as villainous or yeah, yeah, as yeah. stupid yes. or whatever. And yeah. it's quite an interesting, actually, um, yeah. kind of... And they're told to usually, now from what I've, I've read and heard from my sources, they're told to ham it up. They're told to oh, are they? kind of be over the top. Mm. You know, so it makes their, obviously, their stars as well look smarter, stronger, yes, better. Absolutely. Of course it does. But yes, you'll find a lot of them are a wee bit more over-the-top bad guys. Mm -hmm. Especially in Jackie Chan movies, his Westerners always tend to be yes. the worst of the bunch. Even in his English language <laughs> yeah. ones. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but some of them have went on to do some great stuff. They really have. She looks great, doesn't she? Mm, she does. Those glasses are a next Harry level. is a beautiful woman, though. I think she, she is, is a stunning, stunning woman, yeah. But, and always, it seems to be even, even in action, she always looks so well. You know, some people kind of look a bit rough when they're mm, fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she always tends to I don't think I've ever look. seen that, anybody in a hong kong or asian film fighting that looks rough ever no well until you see the westerners well, come in well yes well yeah but what i mean is any asian yes, actor i, I mean they get battered I mean. and bruised they and look, bleed but they look great doing it they do yeah undeniably so. but isn't it funny like uh, like i said i think i said earlier and i didn't i don't think i finished the point but just mm. in case i didn't is that <laughs> Um, what's so great about these films is that you know they go through all of this kind of battering and they bruise and they bleed oh, whereas in western I know god <laughs> um, in western films they tend to come out very much unscathed especially like in 60s 70s 80s mm. you know they don't tend to really you know get too battered and bruised no, yeah, whereas yeah. they within one one two every fight yes, they're bleeding head, and they're yeah. bruised and they're, they're hurt <laughs> and you know but like you saw with Sheila Chan in the florist shop when she got mm. punched in the eye immediately it was like this big yeah. purpley and that yes there's that whole violence to women yeah but at the same time it's cartoony in the sense that mm. you know that that's not going to happen yeah. instantly you know? yes. and it's so um, massive <laughs> it's opposite, it was a big red yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... and that again that for me is something I, I guess how I've always looked at Hong Kong action movies is Almost in a, in a cartoony way, the violence. He's got a great jaw. Yeah, he does, isn't he? Sorry, keep going. He does. There is a cartoony take on, on it. Mm. You know, you just know what they get up to here in this whole movie just possibly isn't going to happen in real life because there's... Just, I don't know. It's quite intricate. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, there is, there is, a, there is obviously a comedy... Side There's more likelihood of this happening in real life than there is of Captain America swinging down through that window. Oh, right uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, who, who knows? <laughs> His outfit is wild. It is an absolute atrocity. I mean, it's like a, I don't know, what kind of green would you even call it? Snot. Snot green? It's snot, it's snot green. It's snot green. It's a snot green shirt with it's a like, it's pink like a, it's, waistcoat yeah. and a high collared white shirt. It's like a, it's like a green jacket that has been put through the wash one too many times and has lost it all really of it. Ha, He's like got it's extremely bloodshot eyes. Washed. Then. He probably hasn't slept. Washed out. And again, the amount of hours they shoot per day, you pro mm. they probably haven't slept. <laughs> He's still very handsome though. Um, he, he, I'm not too sure where his background of where he's from. You know, obviously Hong Kong is Hong Kong, but there's a lot mm. of places around it and of a course. lot of islands and whatnot that they can't be from. Yeah, you can see his eyes there. They're very, very bloodshot. They are, aren't they? Very skinny. I'm trying to remember his name. Sorry, I'm just going through my head trying to, I can't. 
So this is obviously the gangsters, which is her hit Max Mox girlfriend mm -hmm. from who stabbed in the ass earlier. Mm -hmm. Um her brother and his men, so they're kind of basically not a not a brother. Is it her pimp? And they're trying to then buy her mm -hmm. off them so that the things you have to do just to get a girlfriend, you know. Interestingly enough, in Sorry, Petty Cab well Driver, <laughs> in Petty Cab Driver, Max Mock's character dates a prostitute from the local brothel and has to go and buy her out as well. Wow. Interesting. Have you ever had the paying. pleasure of Petty Cab Driver? Nope. Oh, I have not. Sweet. I've never had the pleasure of a brothel either. No. Or paying. Or for, paying, yeah. Or paying <laughs> for a girlfriend shot. or a boyfriend. Wow. <laughs> Who is that? Right down the mountains. Right down the mountains. You're hilarious. Say... <laughs> like she's fucking kill. She's yeah, trying to hold it together. Really you carry is thinking this is quite funny. These, action. I know, right? These outfits are ridiculous. So 80s. Isn't it? It's so, like we've just stepped into so perfect with Jamie, <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis and she's, Josh Fulton. She's trying to make her muscles and her boobs bigger. Look. <laughs> oh have no. My have got my bigger. breasts got bigger breasts? <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> this is like, this is, this is that dark humour of Frankie Chan's I yeah. talked about before in, oh, in my review. And then hairy armpits. That's something else like. I didn't even notice the hairy armpits there. God love her. She's a good face for radio. Oh, <gasps> George. And I, I, sometimes I say things out loud. I swear I'm no. not No. So obviously they're trying to go straight now. They're running a gym. Okay. Set up their business to try and go straight. It's jumped very quickly. It has. Yeah. It has, yeah. <laughs> You'll not, I mean, there's certain elements of Frankie Chan's films that I can accept aren't going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. But for me, the films are still one of the, one of my favorites from Hong Kong mm -hmm. cinema, but he is not the strongest director by any means. He makes some entertaining stuff, mm -hmm. makes some Marmite stuff that people yeah. just don't know how to take. But for me, I get him. I understand. He is a bit of a wild man. And his, his, but his, his comment, look at the tops as well. The Deodora sponsorship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yes, his comedy is quite quite dark, quite twisted. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> Today it would be a, a conversation is is Frankie Chan an enabler? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, is he? Because he, mm. he has the freedom to create his own movies. Yeah. Is he now an enabler yeah. to violence <laughs> against women and abuse on set? Not that I diminish any of those things no, that take no, away from but it, but you, you can't imagine that conversation happening could, right you now, could. couldn't you? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's such a different time, isn't it? I think it's all... That is an ugly fucking gem. I'm not even... It joking. really, look at that It looks wicker. like an old person's home. It does, doesn't it? Especially with but him being what, wheeled through in his wheelchair. This, this is, what, 1990? So this is at a period it's where ghastly. Florida was setting up all their holiday homes and... <laughs> that's what they still look like believe it or not Ugh. last time we were in Florida the ho the homes had that kind of furniture in it Ugh. yeah the very 90s thing very 90s yeah. uh, you know I love furniture. Japanese culture because it's minimalist yes I love that mm. very clean looking isn't it this wouldn't, whereas that is this wouldn't work in, <laughs> for no I mean if you, had, if you had doors but, on, on all of it yes, it would look it nice tidy. yeah well, it all, it looks nice for me because it's all very set up and lovely, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, like, it's, everything's very close. And... <laughs> That's the ghastliest gym I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I'd walk in there thinking, oh my God, is today my day for seeing my grandparents? <laughs> Have I come to the wrong place? <laughs> I love this. The fact that even though he's in a wheelchair, he still has the balls to threaten this policeman. Mm. <laughs> But this big guy behind him, I, I've been trying to remember his name from the start. I can't, unfortunately. But again, another character that you'll see popped up, pop up in a number of Hong Kong movies and often play kind of a, a mute or 
a bit of a dopey character or you know like uh more recently i would have watched him in oh them to brother and sister and that's okay God. yes yeah they were uh, more recently i would have seen him in chayam fats um rich and famous kind of tragic hero oh yeah i love those to both those movies yes. yeah and he he was um kind of a servant to chayam fat in that and did a fantastic uh role kind of protecting him and got into a bit of gunfight and stuff but yeah, he's kind of the, one of these character actors that always pops up somewhere. You'll always see the face. Yes, Max Mox, I would... His legs I are mean, gorge. I would be on that in no time. He is bloody gorgeous. Love to have met him back then. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well. But yes, I'm always excited to see a, Mo a Max Mock movie. Or Max Mock in a movie. Listen to that dramatic music. It is quite. All because she's preckers. <laughs> so it's I, I feel like bursting into love. Is this is quite this is quite a subdued thing. role for Sheila. Oh um, really? <laughs> yeah, she's usually a real whiny, screamy, crazy over the top kind of character player, you know. Um where would you have seen her in Prince's Son? Uh, never seen Prince's, never seen Prince's Son. Son. Um, All's Well Ends Well 92. She's in... Oh gosh, I mean, any number of Hong Kong movies, obviously. But yeah, usually she plays a much more wild... Mm -hmm. Someone you, you kind of can't stand. Or somebody the characters around her can't stand. Yeah. You know, and ends up getting a black eye. Yeah. Usually. Gotta say, I love a good action scene set in at a dock. Yeah, you'll have that. You'll get the, the dock, you'll get the warehouse fight. You love. Get, yeah, and we've obviously had the car, the, the car uh, garage car park, fight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> love a good dock fight, mate. It's something I've always wanted to do for, just generally for um, perhaps our channel or... Uh, as an online project is create a list of the you know the top 10 warehouse fights of the top 10 oh yeah that would be really cool from yeah, Hong yeah. Kong cinema you know that kind of thing or the top 10 car park fights and so mm. on I think that would be fun yeah to, 10 to best car chases yeah, yeah 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 just to really work work awesome. on picking the finest definitely so funky, first funky funky music there's a Chubber couple, also of, couple of cars me. probably in amongst all these containers so it all boils down to the cars. It is. It's about the cars. Um, That's why I boiled down with us. It Thank is. God I didn't buy that car. For good and right. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and a container yard fight um, top 10 would be fun too because yeah. you had a cracker one in knockoff. Yes. So you you did. really did. Um, well, you've they got, really did. I think Tiger Cage 2 does a great... This is another series I need to watch with you. Is yeah, Tiger, Tiger Cage, Cage yeah, yeah. series. Fantastic. Oh! Lovely. I think that's Jonathan Isgar. Ah! Yes! Ooh. Fucking hell, yeah. Frankie. Vincent Lynn, Jonathan Isgar. I mean, Frankie... Oh fuck! That Again, was hell. that a dummy? No, nope, that was a person. Jesus fuck! That looked agonising. He was it? flipped, and that could have killed him. That could have killed him. It didn't. <laughs> it didn't. <laughs> Not the. Well, it might have killed the, the stuntman. Stuntman. <laughs> yeah, Frankie has never been. You're dispensable, come on. Like the most yeah. graceful. Um, he's not a trained fighter per se. He's not the most graceful mm. fighter, but he does look great in action I do enjoy watching him fight yeah and he does just throw himself into it it's what you need it's what you yeah, need yeah, with an yeah. action hero is someone that just but he's, he's can the, throw themselves into it and get away with it he's the most eccentric looking action hero you know we mm. moustache there's only him and George Lamb can pull that off oh George Lamb oh Jesus do you know it's like I expect a, like a you know, with that moustache for like 11 women to come out badass and Yeah. You know. <laughs> and no matter what movie he's in, that, that's there. Horny you know. cab driver or something. Yeah. Like <laughs> 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 Look, see the like, yeah. over. <laughs> Bam, oh. motherfucker. Uh oh. <laughs> what a country. Nice, yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
Bye. <laughs> well. uh, shut balls, I'd be shut in a brick. Wouldn't you? I don't like to be <laughs> confined. Confined? I don't like to be contained. Under a container? <laughs> I'd be afraid of it fucking dropping on I know, cr- crushing you. Jesus. Crushing you. This is very Belfast. I'm afraid of crushing you. At least they got rid of those hideous daffodils in the back of that car. Yeah, the... They were um, yellow roses. Oh, well, whatever they Very were. much so. They were bogging. Uh-oh. I... Oh. <laughs> Just leaving them. Oh, it's a setup. <gasps> Whoa. Oh, it was a whole big setup for Flip's sake. Now she feels guilty. <laughs> Michael's feeling kind of like smart ass. So your girlfriend did you in? Like she's yeah. really my girlfriend. <laughs> Don't touch me. But you. Uh, Yukari had starred, I think it was the year before. Not as strong a role, not a not a full role like this, but she starred um along with Cara Hoy from obviously Shaw Brothers and my own auntie, all that, with Frankie Chan in Burning Ambition, which is an amazing movie. Uh, he directed, I think it was the year before or the year after, I'm really sure it was the year before. And there's a brutal scene where her and Cara are fighting a bunch of thugs with baseball bats with broken glass all over the floor and barefoot. Whoa. But brutal compared to this, this is very lighthearted action comedy. Um, Burning Ambition is very dark, um, serious triad thriller. Mm. But that was the thing with Frankie. He he did try his hand at so many different genres. You know, mm. like un- uh, Unforgettable Fantasy is a real fantasy romantic comedy mm. with, with certain action elements to it. Um, but he also starred in a lot of straight and made a lot of straight drama mm-hmm. uh, or action drama. But I think it's so important as a creative to be able to um, explore yeah, yeah, yeah. multiple yeah. genres and show your diversity within, you know, your own create. you know, your own creativity is diverse of, you mm-hmm. know, um, it's diversive. It's diverse. Mm, it's diverse. Um, so, wow. So these so were wow. all in the tank. So this is why the gangsters had the... The gangsters were patrolling because they were hiding the cars with the drugs. Mm. So this is where they kind of come into the cross with uh, Michiko and her guys. Oh, he's so cute. But, um, yes, so Frankie had made quite a number of different things. Obviously, he... Made a Warriors tragedy, which I had reviewed earlier, mm-hmm. which was kind of his entry to that new wave genre where you had the likes of Once Upon a Time in China, Our Monkey, Burning Paradise, yeah. uh, New Dragon Gator, and all that kind of coming out. And that was kind of his entry to that. But it was kind of like, I mean, the, the general uh, modern day action comedy was what everybody kind of stuck with. Mm-hmm. But in terms of the other things, it was like he almost just tried it once. And then went away again. The Legendary Amazons was a remake of 14 Amazons from Shaw Brothers. And it was a big mm-hmm. epic. So again, of course, there's the Chinese epic kind of mm-hmm. coming in. So he's trying his hand at that. But that is that is the thing, you know, to be able to, you know, we're both creative people, you know. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I like writing and things like that there. But I don't like to limit myself to just one genre and no, one no, kind no. of story. It's so nice to be able to explore that as a creative person. And whether you get it right or you don't, Mm -hmm. just to be able to do that, you know, is it's a courageous thing for any creative to move away from what they're known for. So you may may become known for one particular genre or one particular um, type of storytelling technique or whatever. To be able to diversify yourself in that way and and change it up, failure or success, Mm. it's, I think as a creative, you probably agree, it's it's quite fulfilling, you know, because at least you know, you can say, well, I did it, didn't work, but, you know, I tried it and I always wanted to. Well, I did. Obviously, I've made zombies, zombies, ghosts, killer clowns, and then I jumped into Onus and Mm -hmm. made a a more of a drama, art house drama Mm -hmm. kind of piece. Um, which was quite a different take. Mm-hmm. 
So here you have, obviously, Sheila Chan. Her boyfriend or husband mm -hmm. is the driver of the race cars for Michiko's. They don't know, obviously, there's a, another problem with mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Um. So she's using him uh, to race. Sheila knows about the cars because, obviously, Frankie, her brother, mm -hmm. has backed her up in that. This Jeff Falcon again. Um, I'm just looking out for Bruce there. Bruce Fontaine. Dun, dun, dun. Here's the big reveal. What is he wearing? It, it's his race tracks. Good you know, God. Race suit. The boiler suit that the race car drivers would wear. That cap. Is that silly string over him? Yeah, they were just celebrating. Oh, did I miss something? Did yeah. I fall asleep there? <laughs> Didn't see it. I was like, "What in God's <gasps> name? Oh, oh, is this the big moment? Is this the big climax? This is the place." <laughs> Silence, please. Entry, everybody entry by forklift. It's always how I wanted to enter. Yeah. <laughs> via via forklift. It's her re outfit. Sister in law to be. <laughs> what a fucking odd thing to say. Uh, it probably sounds better life. in Cantonese. It does. I find a lot of those uh, things just don't translate very well to English at all. Sure yeah. they don't. <laughs> but again, she looks fucking brilliant. So is this like the is this the final it's getting there. It is oh, getting sorry, there. I thought yeah, yeah, just yeah. the way everyone kind of came together. There, I thought was this the final fight sequence? You know that they're gonna. This is um, obviously they were caught stealing the car, mm -hmm. but they've uh, and Max had drove it away, but now they've made plans with the they've worked with the police in entrapment to get these guys um, taken care of, but also. It means her sister's husband or his sister's husband will be arrested. So why are Michiko and, and um, Yukari getting into the same car together? What's the oh, story just, there? Just to, um, it's just to accompany her. Oh right. Both oh, Jeff, she's been after her. Okay. Both yes. Japanese women well, working in Hong Kong cinema. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yes, they're looking for the drugs. Oh dear God, you'd be so pissed when you someone did that to your car and there was nothing in it. Mm -hmm. Like, are you for real? If you're going to put that all back together. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Jeez. I mean, they're fairly strict. They've done, I was quick. just about to say, they've, they've, within 30 seconds, they've done more in that car than they have in the whole film. They've obviously, yeah. Uh, so they've tricked them. They've tricked them back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Machiko also stars in Magic Cop. Do you remember I got it through oh, yes, recently yeah. on a, from Germany? Um, as a, so a sorceress. It's just bright and dull, like. She does have a fantastic on screen presence. Must be a thing about Japanese women and actresses. Oh my God, they're so you know, like yeah, yeah. I think that a lot of like Asian people just have an amazing on screen presence. Like, I cannot take my eyes, you know this. I cannot take my eyes off of Gong Lee. Yes. She's just so, like, whoa. Like, even when she's on screen, like, I watched the recent Miami Vice. Yes. Similar kind of movie to this, you know, drugs. Well, and... recent as in 10, yeah, yeah, 10 yeah. years ago. You know what I mean. But... Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean, did I say recent? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Well, recently I, I watched yeah, it. Yeah, recently you watched um, it. And I just couldn't take my bloody eyes off her. Mm -hmm. She was amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice to see her getting that Hollywood mm -hmm. role, mm -hmm. isn't it? Very much so. I actually just got through there, um, The Empress... And The Assassin. And The Assassin. Love that film. I saw that at an art house cinema in Toronto in 2000. I went wow. to watch it. Would have been amazing screen. on the big screen. And I didn't know what to expect, mm. but it was gorgeous. It is a beautiful mm. film. She's an sensational actress. I love a terracotta warrior. Oh, but I love a lot of her stuff that she does with Zhang Yimou. Yes, you know? the, the drama. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's a very... She's like the Meryl Streep of China. Isn't yes, it? she really is. a great fight sequence. On a beach. This is just hit me as hard as you can. Yeah. So obviously emotion has taken over mm. the two of them and their <laughs> their uh, false relationship has blossomed. Oh, true lovers. Oof. <laughs> 
That's why I treat my true loves. That's probably why it's never worked out. Yeah. It's not, <laughs> <laughs> it's not fun. Why are you hitting me? I love you so much! But you cheated me. Um, it's not fun fighting in soaking wet clothes. No. Oh. <laughs> He's feeling a bit down in the dumps. Okay, very There good. she gets another punch Jesus in the eye. Jesus, Sheila, you need to... <laughs> oh, my good God. <laughs> Let's buy another, like, just a, another... That's Vincent then, the big tall guy. Who was the main kind of fighter against Jackie Chan in Operation Condor. Mm. Are they just going to dump her overboard? <laughs> Are they? It looks like Locker it. Fuck woman. Well, they've, they've made up. That was quick. Can't you... Uh, yeah, it was fast, yeah. Oh, they're forcing her to phone. Ah, we're getting there. We're getting there to the big ending. Mm. This is quite, quite the end battle. I mean, she. Yeah, I mean, if someone was saying that right next to me, I'd be like, "How do I get off this boat?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you probably wouldn't want to jump in that. No way, I would Cause, take the rest. Cause way not Death like, or dysentery. It's probably cleaned up more <laughs> now, but yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Mark, yeah, what I mean, would you like? Would you like to die or get a staph infection? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know. I didn't think... It's I, not a great option, but I'll take the staph infection. We, we, cert- we didn't see one person in the water when we were there. Mind you, it, it well, was choppy as fuck. But crossing it was lovely. Yeah, on the boat. Yeah, on the ferry. Oh, wow. Such an experience. Again, something when you've watched it for 30 years, you know, you're like, to be able to do it. Yeah. And for something like 50p, it was ridiculous. Oh, excuse me. Again, more regular faces, Western faces from mm. this era of Hong Kong cinema. Oh, is this where they're going to Oh, love this. Absolutely love this fight. He was a bad guy in Operation Condor too. Remember him? Don't know why I was holding my breath there. Yeah, <gasps> I know. I did. You did you hear me doing yeah. that? <laughs> that? That kind of exhale moment. I'm anticipating. Ooh, <gasps> tasty. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of kick-ass moments here. Nice. Closing the door is always very dramatic. Yes. Well, like that, that lighting was good. It I? was. I do love whenever they walk into a room <laughs> and there's like big heavy lighting behind them mm. and you're like, wow, if only the sun did that in real yeah, life. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> love the fighting gloves. This is something I owned from a... Is he walking a dog? In no. Here? No. What do you see? Oh. <gasps> Get away out of time. It's been a set, a set up the whole way. These are, these are smart guys, yeah. They are very clever. <laughs> for being so stupid. Ah? Eh? That's that. She looks great. Have you seen Mark? Oh. No! <laughs> I would have loved to have seen that moment. Uh. <laughs> ah, fuck me, no way I die. <gasps> oh no, we should show this to Yami. Is that crabs? It's chickens. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> is that dead chickens? <laughs> yes. No, it's a, they're they're pretty much alive. Oh no! I can't watch that. George, why so... didn't you warn me? <laughs> oh no! Oh my god! Oh. They're blowing up chickens. Yeah. Well, they are getting shot at. Oh my god! No, they've just killed real chickens. So. Oh. I mean, On camera. I'm sure they didn't go to waste. Oh god! No! Oh George! No! Oh. <laughs> No, no, no. This no. is no longer fun. It's gone. It's gone. I just get ready for the action. Who does that? The, the Chinese. Oh, I don't mind a snake. Kill the snake. <laughs> <laughs> don't kick the snakes! Oh my god! What's wrong with these people? Uh, uh. Where were Peter? 
when you were doing this. They were on the other side of the harbor. <laughs> yeah. They were too scared yeah, to look, talk. Now they're shitting the camels. Camels? Yes. Oh, cigarettes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's oh. a lot of dead chickens. Oh, there there. is a lot of dead chickens. Oh, no. Mm. Interesting. Oh. oh. That's some fucking weapon, isn't it? Oh, that is some weapon. I'd like that. Uh-huh. Snakes and chickens. It's like the... Oh, oh boy, going to crush some chickens. Oh, that's, that was Bruce Fontaine there, falling back. This is fucking excellent. I just love this end battle. As long as there's no more. No, there's no more. Chicken killing and I don't snake believe so. Oh, Ouch, geez, it the actually ways. broke the stairs. It did, didn't it? Yeah. Where the hell did I get that? What? That gun. <laughs> it's huge. One that makes an explosion like yeah. that. Yeah. No, it is literally... I would just be sitting on the Rathgill Road fucking firing other cars. <laughs> or... Firing grenades. Yeah. It'd be so much fun, wouldn't it? Mm. I know I love the, the American fight. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Oh. Purse your lips. Mm. <laughs> this gun won't fire unless I do. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Very bright moment and not fun. <laughs> uh, Colors. Not, I forgot I to mention. Like that, right? You don't like that. No, right? it's a bit too harsh, harsh on them. Yeah, especially in white. Yeah. Um, Fong Hakon, who was the security guy in the car park at the start, who mm-hmm. does the fight choreography for this, um, also did the fight choreography for Frankie on a Warrior's Tragedy, which he also has a small bit in. Not a small bit, actually, has quite a, a prominent role in. Oh, here we go. Yeah. <gasps> Handsome big guy, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. Very much so. You know, Operation Condor, his face is all scarred. You don't really get to appreciate him, apart from his moves, but mm. he is a fantastic fighter. <laughs> oh, tasty. Again, swift, fast, hard choreography, you know. Oof. Does making noise make you hit harder? It's a release of energy as such. Ah. That's why even when you're training... <gasps> Whoa, what a move you that carry. Was, that was pretty awesome. A nice split, split kick. Oh, here we go. <gasps> Get out of This is amazing. Wow. Ooh. I thought his leg was gone there Nearly. for a second. <laughs> no way. This Wee. is incredible. <laughs> oh, Frankie, don't be a pissy. Yeah, don't be a pussy. You carry just a slits on that. Take on three of the toughest fighters. <laughs> that is some sword. Isn't it gorgeous? That's why you call it a knife, but it's really not. <laughs> Broadsword. Oh, beautiful. Mm-hmm. Oof. Again, you know, a lot of fans of Hong Kong movie will say Michelle Yeoh is the best female on-screen fighter mm-hmm. and without a doubt she is phenomenal she does some amazing stunt work mm-hmm. and has pulled off some incredible moves yes but i and she's done this move also through the in um police assassins to mm-hmm. yes madam where she smashes through the yeah the real end. but i just she hasn't done anything as gritty as this since Royal Warriors or mm. Magnificent Warriors, she, you know, there's she's always had a more polished approach to choreography. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, balletic, almost. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say her stuff is very balletic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas the likes of Yukari and Moon tend to be <clears throat> much more gritty, stronger. And intense. Look yes. that move. That's in- wow, what an incredible. Very <laughs> acrobatic, isn't it? Here we go. You have, to, you have to be incredibly acrobatic as a as a martial of artist. She and be. Flexible. I love love her with the gloves on. Yeah, she looks great with those gloves yeah. on. She doesn't show. Again, that's what I was going to say earlier. Sorry, from my from I was like twelve, I had a pair of these constantly. Every time I oh, went gloves? out after school, always these these. <gasps> oh yes, fight, oh. fighting gloves. I call them. You know, Machiko's not getting in on the mm-hmm. in the fight. Nice, no, just been standing there looking idly for the last. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what? What? That looks like a giant condom. It does, doesn't it? How do you 
No, there's just no physical way that that would be. Well, he's doing it. Oh, that's my belly. Dear God! Ooh, I'm hungry. No, tell me this. Actually, it's a, a, an interesting thing you may you may not know. Um, oh, I hope this battery holds out. Oh, I hope so too. <laughs> um, in films like this, props, etc., um, weapons are they <laughs> real? Some. <gasps> Yes. So they would. There will be. We know that the gunfire. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of, of fake, fake ones, obviously. Um, but there's a lot of, a lot of real. God, that scared me. Then. <laughs> there's a lot of real blades and a lot of obviously, um, for certain shots. Then they'll be. Then they'll be swapped with. <laughs> then they'll be swapped with. Um, wow! What a move he did there with that fan. Yeah. He is definitely one of the best Western movers. Jeff, and so is Mark. Nice, beautiful, oh. beautiful moves here. Mm-hmm. Who choreographed the fights for this? Fung Hak On and the Jackie Chan stunt team. Very good. But yes, uh, I mean, Fung has been around from the 70s doing a lot of the traditional Kung Fu work, uh, Kung Fu movies, and then into the modern stuff with Jackie Chan uh, and sticking with him. For a long time. <laughs> and poor Mark. Mark just constantly gets, in every movie, gets abused, you know. <laughs> well, he's the villain. He's got to yeah, be. exactly. Oh, God. Oof. Nice, nice, nice moves. Fan work. Beautiful. This is, oh, wow, incredible fight sequence. This whole... Mm. And fight is amazingly apart from the dead chickens, <laughs> but oh, wow, fucking tasty! Like, is this your like new favorite expression? Tasty, it's fucking tasty, fucking tasty. It is it? tasty. There, there's there's something tasty about this kind of fight story. action that just yeah, so is, appealing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> without a doubt. That's what I need to do after that movie. Yeah. Harry found myself <laughs> down. Fuck the knives on the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm boiling here. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I, love, I, I love the ingenuity and the innovation and the use of the set. You know, that yes. they take up. You know, it's, it's very rare to see locations... <sighs> Like physical locations being utilized, yes, kind of oh, fully, yeah, 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 yeah. but they utilize everything from the boxes to the poles to the weapons. Everything. You know, everything yeah. is used. It's, I find that Hong Kong action films are very prop driven, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, and yeah, set yeah. driven. That they <laughs> that they use absolutely everything. That was a complete waste of his time. Yes. Up that. <laughs> um, but they they use everything until it's unusable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, totally. and it's a wonderful thing to see because it makes for a much well, more dynamic why, yes. fight. So that's why as well you'll find more so again in the older Hong Kong stuff is they would they would pretty much have created the action on, on the spot. Or, you know, um in my scripts I just write to be choreographed on set. Because I don't know. <gasps> oh, oh, nice move. I don't know. Wow, did she do that herself? Oh, oh that's amazing. Right in the throat. Oh my God, did she? she stuck her fanny in his throat. Her fan. <gasps> uh, <laughs> yes, I would always write to be choreographed on set because I don't know until we turn up in the day what's going to be available to, mm-hmm. to, to make happen. Yeah, you know? exactly, yeah. Things could change. We might not get the location after all on the mm-hmm. day of shooting or whatever. So I don't have the pleasure of designing a fight scene mm-hmm. for weeks on end. Yes. I have to kind of just pull it together then. Yeah, there's a couple of wee victims there, isn't there? Ichiko didn't um, really get a chance to uh, No, not, not as much as she has in other movies. Oh God, there's a lot of dead chickens. <laughs> I know, but you think about it in this day and age, today, mm-hmm. all them chickens are dead now. They don't age well. <laughs> that we look. Sexy we look. He well. is bloody gorgeous. Absolutely. Even her look, she's like, oh yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, I'm in fishnets as well. Oh my god. What the actual fucking fuck. fuck? Did she do that herself? Don't know. 
Wow, that's pretty impressive. It was very impressive. Ooh, 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 ooh. <sighs> no, uh, you carry a box does not stop the bullet. <laughs> I'm sorry. Unless there's more chickens in the box, then they'll catch the bullets. Can the box, she actually says, can the boxes block? Oh! <laughs> oh my god, wow! Oh fuck. <gasps> She's psycho. Evil? She's an evil bitch. Where's the gear? Oh, I love when people call it gear. It makes yeah. them sound so much more straight than they yeah. actually are. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, this would have been a massive, massive hit if that had been Jackie Chan and Yoon Byo. Mm. Do you know, like, and quite possibly even more polished. I often wonder in films, like, I know what makes for the scene, but it's kind of like, I would just blast through them and just be like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't make for a great film, Campbell but, you know. Ball, yeah, Campbell Ball, Just yeah. like, yeah, just all the... <laughs> Look at her flailing about. Oh, is fuck. she a train fighter <laughs> as well? No, she, she is a genuine weightlifting... Oh yeah, she Champion. said that. Yeah, oh my yeah, gosh, yeah, yeah. Wow. But obviously, has adapted to film and mm. um, very well. But she she definitely get, uh, gained a following as this villain of Hong Kong movies. Mm. <laughs> he talked to you from dirty when I pretended to be in love with him. Eat shit. Eat <laughs> shit. Oh, she's not it? walking away fast enough for it to be believable. Yeah. <laughs> but she, she's cuffed them between the window. So they can't escape. No. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> and we've reached the end. There we go. Yay. Fantastic. Did you Brilliant end fight sequence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, quite um, a quite a basic, you know, film. Yes. You know, nothing overly spectacular in but, terms of story and whatever, but fun action movie with great fight sequences. Yeah, it is a lot of fun, and more so if with the volume cranked up, you would have enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, more. I'm sure. Yeah, no doubt. Um, but yes, it is a fantastic wee film. I think it City would be One fun. Health Club. Please tell me that is not a real place it's that real they filmed, and they filmed in that shit show. It is that is real. ridiculous. Probably doesn't look like that today. Well, I would uh, like but... to think not. <laughs> But yes, a fun movie. Um, mm -hmm. One of again, I love I love seeing you carry in fun fun roles. This yeah. is a fun role for. She does do a lot of serious stuff, obviously. Yeah. But or has done sorry. Um. But yes, uh, a lot of fun. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, don't forget to check out our other videos on the channel, such as. Movie reviews, reviews of the MCU yeah. uh, television shows on Disney Plus, uh, trailer well, reactions, trailer reactions, our new podcast, podcast, our nice packages, our screen oh. queens. It's all there. It's all there. Check it out. Get subscribing, please do, and um, share it with your friends. Yeah, and um, be sure to join us again for another audiovisual commentary. Whereas next time we may do heroic trio. Or Avenging Quartet. Or Avenging Quartet. Or Angel Terminator. Who knows? <gasps> Who knows? We the have list is so endless. many to choose from. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Cherry Pie. Cherry Pie. I'm trying to starve. I know. I love Cherry Pie. Me too. <gasps>